everybody, this is Miss Nicole with Science Bites, and today I've got a really fun project for us. We're gonna be putting a little art into our science, and we're going to tattoo bananas. And you may have noticed my introductory picture for the video, and that is an example of what we're going to be doing. So you can see here on this banana, I tattooed the words Science Bites with Miss Nicole. And it's a very simple project, and the science can seem a little complicated um, with a lot of um, scientific jargon, but I'm going to simplify it for us and make it really easy to understand. Before we get started on our project today, I want to talk a little bit about bananas themselves and why a banana skin actually turns brown, because that's the key to how we're going to be able to tattoo our bananas. You can see on almost every banana in the store, um, none of them are perfectly yellow. Most bananas that we buy or that you've seen have some sort of brown markings on them. They might have some little dots. They might have some bigger areas of brown. So what is it that makes the banana skin turn brown? Banana skins turn brown because of a process called enzymatic browning. I know that sounds like a very technical term, but I'm gonna simplify it significantly for us because there's a lot of technical jargon we could go into. But basically, all banana skins are made up of cells. And when those cell walls, those cell membranes break down or they rupture or something makes them rupture, maybe if we scratched the banana, we'd be rupturing some of those cells and forcing them to open. The insides of those cells start to come in contact with a lot of different things, with some enzymes, with some oxygen, and when they come in contact with those other things, they start this process of enzymatic browning. And as part of that process, the cells start to produce melanin. And melanin is actually what makes our skin a certain color, and yes. in the case of our bananas, it's making the banana skin brown. So that melanin that is caused as part of this enzymatic browning process makes the brown marks on our banana. In order to tattoo our banana, we need just a few simple household items. I didn't even have to prepare kits for anyone at the library because there's so few items. You do need a banana. So you will need to, to talk your mom or dad into buying you a banana or two. You might want a few just in case things don't go the way you planned the first time around. You will also need something to poke into the banana, something that has a little bit of a sharp edge. I like to use push pins, or you can also use something like a toothpick. You will also probably need a pair of scissors and some scotch tape and some regular copy paper. Whatever drawing paper you have around, it actually doesn't even have to be blank paper. As long as you can draw on it and see what you're drawing, that works. I have just some regular copy paper that I use in my printer, so I'm gonna be using that. But another thing you can also use is um, magazines you have around the house. If you have a fun magazine with some cool pictures in it, definitely go bring that out, as long as you don't mind cutting it up. I actually have um, this Pokemon magazine, which I finished reading, so I was okay cutting something out of my Pokemon magazine to use on my bananas. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tattoo a Pikachu onto my banana, and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see me at work tattooing my banana. Now here's my Pikachu. He might be a little bit big for this banana, but I think he's close enough so that it'll work. So I cut him out of my magazine, sort of down to shape. And the reason you need the scotch tape is I'm actually going to tape him just a little bit in place on the banana so that I don't lose my place. I want him to I don't want him to shift around while I'm while I'm working on him. And now I'm going to use a toothpick. Sometimes I use a push pin, but actually the toothpick can sometimes be easier to hold than the little push pin. Now what you're going to actually do to create the tattoo, and this is why it's called tattooing a banana, because when people get tattoos on their skin, they actually have little machines that poke at the skin so quickly that you can't see it, but that's how they're putting ink in skin. So on our banana, what we're going to do is create a series of little dots 
in as we outline our picture and that's going to change color. It's going to expose those banana cells to all those things and it'll create the melanin which makes it brown. Um, and I'll show you with my pen just so you get an idea what you're doing. So you're really creating a series of dots. But you're gonna do it in the outline of whatever picture you're doing. So here for my Pikachu, I'm just gonna trace it for a second. I'm going to create dots all around his outline. And then anywhere you see something darker, you're gonna fill in that whole area with dots. And that will shade in that entire area. So I'll get started so you can see me at work. Now when you're poking, you don't want, you don't have to poke very far into the banana. You just need to poke, you just need to break the surface of the banana skin. And this is great because that means you can actually use that banana again. You can eat the banana for lunch. And actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna switch to my push pin because the tip of my, the tip of my toothpick is actually already, already bending a little. So you might have better toothpicks than I do. So you can try out different things, see what works best for you. Yeah, this is gonna work a lot easier for me. So I'm just following the outline. If you are an artist and you wanted to tattoo something you created onto the banana, you might wanna make a photocopy of it first so that you're, you're tattooing into the photocopy and not the original because it will mess up whatever you're poking into. Now I've pretty much done the outline of my Pikachu. So now I wanna make sure that I also do some of the, the um, the facial features, like the eyes and the mouth. And with the eyes, again, you just wanna fill in that whole area that wants to be black. And in this, I might even wanna do something about his hands here. It'll be hard to do the, the really fine details, but you can get a little of it in there. So now what I'm actually going to do is peel this off and see what it looks like right now. It may not be finished, but I'm gonna see how it looks at this point. He's looking pretty similar to Pikachu, but there might be some areas where I wanna add some details. Um, oh, for example, I forgot the edge of his ears. Now you can also actually, if you were to scrape your, your sharp point across the surface of the banana, it'll brown too. So I'm gonna actually create a little bit of a line so I know where I wanna tap. And then I'm just gonna quickly tap in that area to make that brown for his ears. And the same over here. I'm just gonna create a little line and tap. And let's see if I can make his eyes stand out a little more. And maybe his tongue. And I might just scratch his cheek. And that's pretty good, I think. I might create some little accents on his tail. Now, you might have to give it a few minutes for all of that melanin to actually kick in um, with that enzymatic browning. But you can already see that my, my little bit, my tattoo of Pikachu looks pretty similar. I did a pretty good job, I think. So you could definitely recognize that as Pikachu. Now remember, I also, you don't have to poke very far into the banana. I would say, you know, if I had my toothpick, just to show you, you can barely even see that I've poked it in. That's about as far as you need to go. And this is now a banana. You can still eat. Nothing is hurting the banana here. All we're doing is creating that melanin, that enzymatic browning reaction in the skin of the banana. And as soon as you peel that skin away, your banana should be fine. Now, if you poke it too far and hit the banana itself, then you might find that your banana will be brown or will have started to brown. It'll still taste good, but it, the banana itself may brown a little bit. So it might take a little practice, which is why I told you to get more than one banana, but that is an example of tattooing the banana. I will also show you one more way to do it with something you draw yourself because you don't have to have magazines to cut up 
to use images from. You can actually create your own artwork on the bananas. Let me show you something that I drew myself, something very simple. So here is a very simple emoji that I drew for myself. Again, it doesn't have to be very complicated. You can actually, there are some people who do things like the Mona Lisa on a banana. Um, we're keeping it simple. Um, just like with my other one, I'm gonna tape this in place so that it doesn't shift around like so. Like it, oops, there we go. I'm gonna use my push pin and I'm just gonna start with the outside and then do the features inside. So again, you just gently poke. And again, I'm barely pushing that push pin in. It's barely going in, just enough to break the surface of the banana skin. The closer together your dots are, the more like a solid line your tattoo will look like. You can also fill in some of those dots afterwards once you pull the paper off. If you find that you have a lot of big gaps, oops, I went off, I went off the outline. That's okay. It's gonna be a little bit of a lumpy emoji. But that's art, right? So here I'm gonna do my eyes and we'll do the mouth. And that's enough for me to see what my outline is looking like. So I'm gonna pull this off and you can already see how it started to become my emoji. So there might be some areas in here I wanna fill in a little bit like this. You can just kind of go over where you've already tattooed, follow your own outline, fill in some gaps. You can see where I went a little wonky over here. That's okay. And we're gonna make sure that these are some nice lines right here. And then I think I wanna fix up the mouth a little bit. It looks like I didn't put my, my dots together quite as closely on the mouth. And I probably wanna try and do something to color in that tongue a little bit. So I'm gonna poke this whole area. I'm trying to do it with my other hand so you might be able to see better. So I'm gonna poke that whole area to try and fill it in and get that whole area to turn brown. And like I said, you can add details by scratching too, because that will also turn brown on a banana in a little bit of time. But that is my own hand-drawn emoji. So hopefully you're gonna have some fun with this project. I have fun with it. I like doing artsy craftsy things every now and again. And we worked in a little science with our art too. Um, like I said, very simple. You can already see how my, my Pikachu has filled in a little bit now that it's been exposed to the air a little bit longer. And there's the emoji that I drew. You guys can have fun. I've done, um, you know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid drawings before. I've done some Muppets. I've done all Star Wars. I've done C-3PO. You can do all sorts of things on a banana. Whatever, whatever images you like, you can try out on your banana. For those of you out there, for those of my scientists who are really into the nitty gritty science details and all those very technical scientific terms for what's happening with that enzymatic browning, feel free to come to the library and I actually have um, this wonderful set of instructions from instructables.com. They tell you exactly what's happening with the science and they give you a lot of tips for different ways you can actually draw or tattoo the art on your banana. All sorts of different ways you can create shadings and light and dark areas and very fancy. We're talking Mona Lisa kind of drawings. I kept it simple with Pikachu and an emoji, but you can take this really far if you want to. So as always, if you have any questions for me, you can reach me at um, the Prosser location of the Bloomfield Public Library. Feel free to contact me at any time. I am happy to give you any help or, or instructions you need. And that's all until our next Science Bites. So enjoy the project and I will see you all next month. Bye everybody.